Welcome to the Nerds in Christ podcast, where we level up our faith by finding the gospel in our favorite fandoms. Welcome back to Nerds in Christ podcast episode 12. It's me, Mike, your homeschool theologian. Who do I have with me tonight? Hmm. I don't know a biblical reference for this, but it's Cameron. It's Cameron, y'all. Stephen, the public school carpenter. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> I don't know where. All right, so we're we're beginning. The worst monsters are the ones we create. I Very love true. Love that. I love that quote. I think that's from the show. So tonight we're talking about The Witcher. Um, we're uh, not so much the book, the game, or the the show. It's just kind of the overall Witcher ideas and different things. Witcher esque. So uh, if you're listening, you have no idea what The Witcher is. Mom, talking to you. Love you. Thanks for watching. Uh, basically, it's a guy. In this world, there's lots of monsters and different things roaming around all over the place. And these people need someone to hunt these monsters down. And the best way they figured out how to kill these monsters is basically to become a monster yourself. Yeah. If you think about it. Yeah, fight fire with fire. So, guys, what is your favorite character in the Witcher series? And it can't be Geralt because it's kind of a given. Vesemir. Yeah, his uh, disciple. Or his, his disciple. Mentor. Mentor. Mentor, I think. Yeah, that exactly. To be honest, I'm not real familiar with the game series, the book, or the television show, but I'm eager to dive in and to kind of, uh, you know, find the find the similarities in the gospel yeah. because I am familiar with the gospel. Yeah, solid. So, uh, solid. I don't really have a favorite character. Um, Geralt would be one, but I said we can't pick Geralt because he's kind of that. The character. But, but maybe. Um, What's the uh, the dwarf guy's name? I can't remember his name. Anyway, we're getting in. Level one, the continent. So in the world, uh, is called it's called the continent. Not so much like, uh, I don't really know if there's a set name of like, uh, other than the continent, but there's lots of different um, cities and, and regions and things like that. But the world in the Witcher is a lot like ours, how there's just evil everywhere. And, and no one wants to admit it, but it's everywhere. And, and you know, they, they don't want to admit the evil or, or see the monster or things like that unless it affects their life. And that's when they call the Witcher to come in and take care of the problem, basically. And how in, in our life, there is some junk that we deal with and we just, for whatever reason, we don't deal with it. We don't take it to the cross. We don't. Um, you see the sin for what it truly is, a monster, and kill it in the, in Jesus' name, you know? When you look at it, 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 when Jesus talks about the enemy, he's prowling around like a lion, yep. waiting for whom he may devour. Yeah. And you look how a lion works. He looks for the weak. He looks for the one by himself. He looks for the small, the, the yeah. injured, all this. And all all of that can be us if we don't bring it to the cross because yeah. those sins, those um, terrors in the world can leave us damaged. It can leave us alone. It can leave yeah. us injured, blind. Right. And that's, and that's what the world looks for. Think about it. You know, the, that the world looks to devour that, the, the youth, the young, and then the weak minded, you know, the, and the ones that feel like they're alone, they have no, you know, they have nowhere else to go. They're not with the group. You know, that's, those are the main targets. If you can, you know, see that, you know. Yeah, those are the targets of the enemy too. And, and you know, <laughs> praise God that we have somewhere that we can go. It's often described in the Bible as a we can go to Him in like a fortress and be secure and safe in Him in mm -hmm. God. Um, we really need to, you know, like we're talking about this this spiritual warfare that we talk about a lot uh, in this this podcast and how uh, we've got to have the armor of God fully equipped. Ephesians 6, um, you know, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, how all those things work together. We can't just have one of those. We can't just have the sword of spirit and with no armor running in. We got to have all of them uh, working together. And uh, I strongly encourage you, listener, to um, kind of study that and dig into what exactly that means. 
And, and to me, also, the, the belt of truth is what holds all your armor together. Exactly, yeah. So you, That's you, why he starts with that. That's, uh, right. I think it's important when something, uh, the first of something, and yeah, you need to starting know the with truth. the truth, the truth will set you free, mm-hmm. right? Well, then you look at the continent, too. I know The Witcher more from the video games. Yeah, and to same. be honest, it's been Witcher 3. Yeah, same. That, that's the only one I played, and I played a lot of it when I did. Yeah. And looking at it, what I noticed is the the continent's a lot like ours. Yes, but I mean, it, it's a lot like us because of the strife in it. Yeah. The continent There's just a war whole, everywhere. Mm-hmm, and so many different uh, factions trying to beat each other out politically and this and that. And it's just all they do instead of trying to find common ground is find more more evidence against each other to bring it up and to Sounds conquer familiar. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's really sad because you look at what that continent could have been with how the witcher and the witchers went through and tried to make it better by ridding the world of evil but at the same time they couldn't rid the world of the ultimate evil which was man yeah the, the people the people were the ultimate evil because no matter even if they took out this the worst monster they go into a town and they see um something i do remember is i watched in i watched the first couple seasons of the witcher and i remember when it was talking about Geralt, the butcher of lavica yeah when he went through and it was because he saw something super heinous wasn't it that he went through and then wiped out the rest of the village i can't remember exactly why that was but i think you're right i think you're on the right thing i think he found out that they had killed a young person or something like that and it just set him off and he went through and he got repentance from like he went and got everyone because they set him up a young person died someone he loved or something along those lines and then he wiped out people right and witchers yes they were known to hurt people but that wasn't their main mission they tried to protect the people yeah they were that social outcast that way they could become the monster in order to hunt the monster right right yeah and uh so level two trial of the grasses so in the series they uh when they're real young the witchers will go through like a trial and they'll take like these different elixirs and potions and things and basically turn them into these monster killing machines so they can like see in the dark their agility is quicker they they can be stronger that sort of thing um and they can they can do more than what ordinary people can do and i think that's so true with us and it's cool that they call it the trial of the grasses because the trials that we go through ultimately will make us stronger and hopefully will grow us in our faith uh, if we do believe in god because uh, he either wills it or allows it no matter what trial we go through like there's always purpose through pain and and uh there's there's you can gain strength through struggle and that sort of thing. And I think that's really neat and something to talk about. It reminds me of what our pastor said a couple Sundays ago when he yeah. said God allows allows things that sadden him to accomplish things in which he loves. Or no. Yeah. God allows things that anger him to yeah. accomplish things that make him. You're on the right track. Mm-hmm. It's something like that. Words. They're, they're not working at the moment. Because what I'm thinking, really, when you're... All I remember from the very first part of the season on Netflix and then you you look at the video game is it talks about how only uh, one or two survive the Witcher process. Yeah, it's a very small uh, percentage. Because they take these elixirs. Well, these elixirs are actually killing them too. Yeah. You get toxicity and all this stuff. But you look at, that's how the world is. I kind of look, we're, we're the Witcher in a sense because we go through all those trials and yeah we realize God's knocking on our door and we answer. So we have life. When some people go through trials, they'll get to a point where God will knock and they won't answer. And then one day they'll not have a chance to answer. Yeah. That's heavy. That's good though. And another thing that the witchers do, uh, that they train relentlessly. Um, You know, they have their swords and that's usually what they train with. And they're just constantly trying to be better at that um, because really that's their trade is is killing monsters with their swords but 
you know, our sword, our Bibles, sword of the spirit, we have got to stay in them and study them. Uh, before this started up, we were talking about, you know, what each one of us were studying. And it was really cool to see we're all in different places, you know, in the Bible and how we're all studying something different. And I wrote down what you guys were studying because I want to get into it. Um, but it's cool that, uh, you know, the Bible is so dense and so I can't even put words on it, but there's, there's a lifetime of, of study and, and reading and you can read the Bible multiple lifetimes of study, <laughs> but it's, you, living. yeah, you couldn't, it's, it's a living word and, and to always stay in it and not so much like, you know, God, what are you trying to tell me today? I mean, we've got the Holy spirit to do that. And, and I think reading the Bible in a way that, God is speaking to you is good. I think uh, having the Holy Spirit speak to you is better um, in, in trying to put into practice what the, those words are saying, um, whether I love to read a proverb a day. That's that's always been my thing, you know, ever since I remember reading the Bible. And, I, you know, I'm 32. I've, I've probably read through the Proverbs, you know, once one a day for, uh, you know, every month there's no telling how many times I've read through Proverbs and still today I'm reading them. I'm like, man, that's good. Man, and you can get some different Proverbs, stuff yeah, each and every time. Proverbs yes. is a whole lot of, aha. yeah. Yeah. It just kicks you in the teeth and you're just like, wow. And so much wisdom that we lack in our world today is just, <laughs> and the only way to get like in the Proverbs, it says over and over, like the best thing to do for, to get wisdom is to get wisdom. Like there's no easy way to get wisdom. You just get it yeah, any way you can. Yeah. You can be in Proverbs and you're highlighting, Ooh, I like that. And you yeah. like that. And you're like, Ooh, yeah. Ooh. And then after you get reading, you're done with the page, the whole page is yellow. And you're like, dang yeah. it. Yeah. I got to use different <laughs> color highlighters for that. Yeah. For but, different passes throughs and stuff like that. And you look at it, that's kind of our elixirs proverbs in a sense, because they're so simple, but they're so complex. It, yeah. it becomes a uh, common sense kind. There's a, most of Proverbs is common sense and that's something we yeah. all lack now. And then the same thing with the trial of the grass is how many people will, you know, they'll be gun ho to get on a mission. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to read the Bible and they get like Genesis and they're like, wait, there's like 50, ch 50 chapters in here or whatever. And 90% yeah. of it's just this person married him yeah. and her. And or they get down to Leviticus and you're like, I'm going to skip this book. <laughs> but you look at it and it says all scripture is profitable for teaching, correcting, yeah. rebuking. Yeah. So anything every from Genesis one, one to the last the last letter in revelation can be used taught to teach, to rebuke, yeah. to correct all of that. And sometimes right. we take it for granted because kind of what I was saying earlier, I know in the past I've kind of taken this book for granted and thinking, Oh, it's just like any other book. But at the same time, it's the living word of God, mm -hmm. the, how it still inspires people today. The fact that this is universally the most published book on the face of the earth. And, um, a uh, pastor I listened to on podcast and on YouTube, he kind of broke it down the other day when he was talking about, you look at what it takes to be on New York sellers or a New York Times bestseller list, right? Yeah. I think you have to be in order to be on there. You have to have sold a hundred thousand copies of your book in the first year. Annually, the Bible with how many times it's printed it supersedes that enough that it'd be on the bestseller list four times, I think, is what he broke it down to. Like, yeah. he took the numbers and everything. So it's like 400,000 copies. Mm -hmm. Each year since it's been published. Yeah, that's awesome. And what, what I was going back to with, like, you know, the trial of the grasses, like uh, only 1% or 2% of the people make it, you know, once they start that journey. And then... And I hate to, I mean, it's the same thing with like reading the Bible. So, you know, a lot of times, and I've had it too. I've, I've been, I've reached that point, you know, in my life where I got bogged down for years at a time. You know, I'd, I'd start out and I'd be like, all right, man, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'll, I'll read a chapter and I'll be like, I'll be on fire, you know. And then um, next night, uh, same thing. I'm, I, I'm fervent. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's go. And then maybe something will come up. And then it's like, okay, I'll put it off. And then, and then I'll put it off again. And then it's like, well, huh. You know, and then yeah. you're, you're back. You're, and then you're, you're the 98%. But yeah. looking at you know? the 
what you're going with, when I face that, in order to get back, I, I kind of have to look at it like the trial of the gla- grasses. Instead of going gung ho, I kind of have to be a little methodical, like watch and see which each part does in a sense. Like, okay, if I read my Bible this morning and I stay focused on God's word, what's the outcome going to be? Oh yeah. And generally, yeah. even in the worst days I've had, a lot of times I can correlate that to when I was starting to get out of the military for some injuries. Those were some of the worst days I faced or um, different parts of my testimony that really affected my life. I look back at those and I'm like, man, if I would have been in the word like I am now and studying and actually seeking Christ and the Holy Spirit and God, even in the midst of those trials, I could. I think of the song Eye of the Storm and the Eye of the Storm, you remain in control. Yeah. And listening to that song and listening to the lyrics reminds me so much of like, man, if I just had that, that would be the eye of the storm. I know the storm's still going around all around me, but I'm in the eye of it. No matter what, right now, this moment, I can choose to make it all right. Yeah. Through God. Yeah. And but I nothing think, else. I think to keep in mind, like, to remember those times where you didn't or you didn't have Christ on your side or, or things like that to remember that, okay, I have Christ now. So in the times, like, like you're saying, like when I'm really studying, I'm on the mountaintop and, and yeah, you go through mountains and valleys, that sort of thing. But like, try your best to stay on the mountain, keep studying. Even if it's just like listening to scripture on the way to work or, you know, whatever, there's so many opportunities that you can just plug it in your ear real quick get the app on your phone and just listen to a psalm or a proverb or and, something in the new testament it's, and I, it's so accessible and, and i agree with that and I, I think that's great but the one one thing that i think i'm guilty of uh and i'm just gonna i'm being, I'm being honest about it you know the one thing i'm guilty of is being um robotic about it yes you know like like uh yeah. like instead of having the right mindset of man i get to study in the word today it's like okay uh, I've got to read a chapter in First Corinthians today. Yeah, but you know, I get what you're saying, but still, it's better than better than not. It is. Know? It is better than not. It uh, is. It yeah, is. Just, yeah. We need you know, to Jordan, Bur- Jordan Burroughs said the same thing. He said that's when you really grow as an athlete and a wrestler when you go to practice and you grind even when you don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you look at it too when you weight lift, when you hit a certain point, you know you can say bench press 100 pounds, right? Yeah. But that gives you the confidence. What are you going to do when you get up to 200 pounds? You're still going to start at 100. Not just because you know you can do it, because it's going to end up cutting your muscle. you got to warm up. More repetition, it starts to build definition. Yeah. And and that's kind of what that does, because I know there's times where it's... Write that down, Mike. Write that down. Well, that's one of those things. It is so true, because in my daily walk, aspiring to be a pastor and everything... I I have to hold myself to a little bit higher standard on that. And sometimes it gets so robotic that I have to, when I realize it, I stop for a second and I'm like, okay, in those past chapters, what did I learn that I didn't realize I learned? And then it starts to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, sometimes it clicks and it's like, I didn't know it then, but now wait a second, everything's lining up. It's sometimes that, jigsaw puzzle that you finally got two letters and you're like wait a second i see the words power not rower yeah (laughs) so (laughs) yeah we'll go with that i mean (laughs) so i heard the other day and i want to start doing this especially when i feel the robotic sense of grinding reading reading through the bible but after you finish a chapter Have a, have a Bible or a journal next to you and write a one sentence synopsis of that chapter you just read and having that in mind, like, okay, I'm, and especially like in the old Testament stuff where you're reading it and you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. You can at least have a sentence saying, okay, this, this King was doing this or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. And what you can do too, is you look back, I've gotten into a habit now where names and places I'll kind of box in with like a black um, pen, just kind of box in. Why was that in there? When I went back and looked, there was, I think it was in Daniel when it was talking about the first king. It went back into history and told of around when that king was there. So it showed those who say, oh, that's crazy. That can't be true. Well, here's actual 
historical fact saying at this time there was a king. He took the Israelites out of Israel or Jerusalem and he put them into captivity into Babylon. Hmm. So wait a second. There's a solid there's a solid line now. It's not a dot dot dot. It's yeah. a solid line showing from point A to point B. Right. And so the main thing about like we were just talking about being robotic and things like that and you know be getting in your word is you know as Christians, you know, like and this goes with the the trial and the grasses and the, and the notes that we have here too is, you know, we need to be what God created us to be. Uh, in other words, like a better better way is it like John three thirty. You know, we need to be less of me and more of He. Yeah. Well, I look at the notes right here, and one of the last things we have on the trials of grass is witchers relentlessly train. They become harder, faster, and stronger than the monster they hunt. Yeah. So, so when you're grinding, when you're doing that, you may not see it, but you're you're growing. You know, and like Stephen's saying, like we have to become less of ourselves and. And like much like the witchers, like have a you have a purpose and God has designed you for that purpose, like a tool. He's designed you for a certain task or or purpose and he, he wants to use you for that. And you need to humble yourself and, and realize that and say, you know what, God, what you have in store for me is way better than I could ever imagine or dream of that I could achieve by myself and that you can achieve more with with God. And, uh, so so next is level three, the monster hunter. Um, and how, especially in the games, um, the, the book talks a little bit about it, but especially the games, they may have done it just for gaming purposes to kind of make more sense, but you, you have to know your enemy. So you get, you know, uh, um, a quest icon or you, you get like something and it's like, Hey, go take out this enemy. You could just go Leroy Jenkins and like attack the thing. But the smartest thing to do is to. Leroy Jenkins, you've never heard that, Steve? I'm, I'm kind of thrown for a small Okay, reason. so it's a thing from World of Warcraft back in the way day. Way back in the day, where like it was one of the first videos I think on YouTube. It really, on. it really was and one of the first YouTube videos. Like he went against one of the biggest battles in world. <laughs> so, so okay. there's like there's literally like 20 people online playing together, and uh, they're going up uh, against like see, the see. biggest, the biggest, like Cameron's saying, the boss of the game. And they're coming up and with they're a like, plan. okay, when, cause like those games, they're very like wave after wave of enemies and, and different things you got to do. And they're like, okay, the healers are going here. The, the melee fighters are going here. And then, you know, they're getting all this planned out. And then this, I think he's a dwarf. He yeah, just, I, I remember World of Warcraft. Like he just, you have the ear, ear he piece just, and you're talking yeah, to everybody. So they're, so they're playing it out. And then one of the characters is just like, Leroy! And he, he runs in. I think it's like a dragon, but he runs into the boss and everyone's just like, no, no, wait, no. And it, it falls apart. So we have plans. God has a purpose. Say, talking about Leroy Jenkins. Mm -hmm. we, we make a plan. Uh, this is going on a rant, but hey, go with it, right? We make all these plans, all this kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah. But most of the time, a wrench gets thrown in our plans. I mean, nine out of ten times. So don't be a Leroy Jenkins. Don't be. Don't run ahead of God. Let God lead you. Mm -hmm. Well, at the, that, that took a couple different turns, but take well, it what you want. It talks about, too, and uh, I think it's, I either read it last week or this week. So it's either first or second Peter when it talks about when the Holy Spirit equips you, he will give you what you need to speak. Yeah. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to speak because he's going to give it. And seeing that into fruition, like when you play the game, in order to find the monster, usually you go to the scene of the crime. So you're like, okay, what happened here? And then it's like, oh, there's another icon. Now I have to follow these tracks. And it leads yeah. you to like a piece of the monster, like a feather or a scale. And you figure out what you're fighting. And that's what it is. You have to figure out what you're fighting in order yeah. to fight it. Because right. without it, you, you don't know what potion you need. You don't know if you need your silver sword or your regular sword, right. so on well, and so forth. I, th I think that's the same thing. If you're going to, you know, if you're wanting to fight a, a spiritual warfare, a spiritual fight, you need to know what you're up against. You need to yeah. uh, almost do research so, yeah. you know, you can kind of figure out why this is this way, why people think that way. Yeah. What what's the cause of it, and how how would I offer rebuttals to arguments? Well, you look yeah. at Jesus in the temptation when he's in the wilderness for forty days, right? Right. The enemy knows. If the enemy knows scripture, yeah. Why can't we? If the enemy knows us, right, in depthly, 
why don't we? I'm, I'm reading this book uh, by a pastor, and it, in it he was given a testimony over um, this gentleman was given a testimony over his past uh, back in the day, and he said uh, he started hanging around with this really bad dude, and he said that bad dude was casing me, and he he was a gangster back in the '60s and '70s. Well, in it. What it, book are you reading? It's called Spirit Rising by Jim Simbola. <laughs> so in it, he, he's in there. And finally, the last encounter with the guy before he comes to know Jesus, the main guy giving the testimony, he's like, how's your mom doing? How's your sister doing? How's your other sister doing? How's your little girl doing? Is she still going to school? So he here? knows him. He knows every detail of his life and gives him this proposition, like basically tells him, hey, I want to do this. And the guy knows if he says no, he's going to die. So he prays and he's like, Holy Spirit, God, if you're there, I, I need a way out. And he said he felt the Holy Spirit come upon him. And he looked at him and said, no, I'm going to follow Jesus now and got out of the car and left. Wow. And that's if the enemy does that in our world, if the bad guys know, like you look at wars, the Germans or uh, the Vietnamese or the different conflicts that we've been a part of as United States um, military, they are always trying to get our plans. They're always watching our troops. Yeah. And we're always doing the same for them, but sometimes they know a little bit more than we know about them, and that gets us in trouble. Yeah. We need to know more about them than they do us because yeah. they know us. we got to get spiritual tactical. Mm -hmm. We need to be spectacle. Spectacle. We need to be Holy Spirit seeing six. Yeah, and the best, like the, literally the best way to get behind enemy lines and figure that out tactically is through the Holy Spirit of being led by the spirit and let, let the Holy spirit speak through you in those times. Like you're talking about this guy. Um, Cause but, you look at the power of your testimony. That's what it is. So you were living with yeah. the enemy at that time, right? Right. So you come out of that, your spiritual blinders are now taken off and you can be like, wait a second. I can see how the enemy worked right there and right there. So I know how to keep him from working here and here in my life. Yeah. And so now you're like a here, double agent. Mm -hmm, and here and here in another double. person's life, helping yeah. bring them out of it. And using that against him, just like the Witcher with, with knowing his enemy traps, baits, all that kind of thing, we can go back into that situation and hopefully get other people out. And Jesus calls us to be fishers of men. And what do fishermen use? Bait. They, they know where the fish are, you know, where they're not, different times and seasons, um, different types of fish, like different types of bait. Sometimes you can drag with nets. Sometimes you have to use a single hook with some bait. Like there's so many different, like I loved how he used, I know he used fishing because, you know, that's where he was. He was talking to like fishermen. That was the community he was in. Right, but it's, it makes so much sense. Like I think we need to look at it deeper in that, you know, it's, it's hard to say like you need to bait someone when you're sharing the gospel, but that's kind of what you do. Like you've got to know, you got to stand well, it's, on it's, I don't think the it's same bait. It's, it's not finding, the right word. It's finding common ground. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's bait isn't the right word, but common ground is like, give them the old bait and switch. Give them the bait and switch. You <laughs> got a hook line and sinker them. So that's how we work with, that's how Jesus worked with the disciples. Yeah. How the enemy works is he does the bait and switch. He does. He tells yeah. you, oh, follow this. Once he it, gets you perfect. hooked. Yeah. He, he pulls you out and puts you straight into the oven. Sin is always a desirable thing. You know, we talked about it with the Lord of the Rings. It's like a, like the, that ring is so desirable. It's, you know, you, it's precious to you. You want it. Yeah. Like, see, once you that, get that's it. That's the thing man. about sin. You want it. You want to do it. Like, right. So we've got to find the common ground when we're sharing the gospel to, to, hopefully share with them something they want, you know, obviously freedom and the only freedom comes through Christ. And then you got to think too, like what we have here is like, everybody's different. You know, yeah. like everybody has different common ground. You know, you yeah. might can share it through someone on a hunting trip. You could share it through, uh, playing you video know, games. a sporting event, video, video games, games. Yeah. you know, maybe some nerdy podcast, you know? Right. I mean, right. Who knows? I'm not going to like a, it's last year when my wife was pregnant i was playing uh call of duty one night and me and a buddy from uh the old church i used to go to we were probably up at one or two a.m just i mean playing call of duty and we were in the middle of a group chat with some random people like before you start the game no right? like in the middle of the game so we're oh, talking okay. to our team and everything me and my buddy just started talking about the bible and scripture and at first these people are like that and then they're like wait a second 
say a little more what yeah <laughs> and it's like wow that's, i didn't think you that's something on the common ground yeah. hopefully with this platform week i want to i want to be on twitch and like play games and uh do that i think that'd be so cool to share the gospel like that I mean, you're going to get the haters on there. You're going to get the kids that are like, backlash. that are like, rah, 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 but it's like, who cares? It's, you know, it's a free platform. Hey, I Jesus, think it'd be fun. And Jesus had that. And he said, blessed be the ones that are persecuted Still, for my name's sake. I don't care to get shot at. That's fun. But uh, one thing about the fishing is uh, Paul, like we talked about earlier, I don't think it was recorded, but Paul knew when to, to preach to Jews and Gentiles both. Mm -hmm. He, like we talked about earlier, he's a very, he was a very good politician and speaker. He knew how to talk to, you know, this person or that person. And I think we need to, to an extent, we need to be that way. We need to kind of know the best way to share the gospel is to share it with, um, you know, friends and not family, but to people, you know, finding that common ground, knowing how you can talk to them and share it in that way. The connections that are in your everyday life. Exactly. A yes. coworker at work. And then, well, maybe they don't bring someone to Christ themselves, but yeah. They're like, hey, let's go out to eat. I'm bringing a friend. Well, yeah. then you meet a new connection. You can go from there, and it keeps expanding. Yeah. And I, I look at, you look at all the uh, letters and the different books in the Bible that Paul wrote, okay? Each one's tailored to the person he's writing to. Right. Romans is very political in a sense. Yeah. The Corinthians are written to the Corinthians. Like, he had to lay it out hard and strong for them in some places, and then soft and gentle in other places. Yeah. Galatians, it's like, no, I, this is one that it's going to be like, hey, we're going to have to stay strong on this one and get you through because these people are telling you a lie. Yeah, Galatians is like a several chapters of just, come on, guys, look. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? But uh, all this leads into, you know, like we're talking about sharing the gospel. Now, now we move into level four, the tools of the trade. Now, how do we share? What are we going to yeah. do now? Before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a second. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you're listening to, please like and share this podcast with your friends and family. Check out our merch where we have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Continue this topic on our Facebook page with other kingdom-minded nerds. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Nerds in Christ podcast. We're on level four, tools of the trade. We're going to talk about the swords in a minute, but I want to talk about the medallion first. The Witcher medallion. Oh, the one that senses monsters? Yes. So it senses monsters in like an evil presence. <clears throat> and I think that's a that's a cool reminder to be in tune with the Holy Spirit so that you, you can... It's like a sixth sense almost. Uh, so you can have the discernment. Discernment, exactly. Because when you're dealing with people, especially like when you're... Uh, spread the gospel talking with people about Jesus you got to be able to discern in a way that you can tell okay I need to back off a little bit or I need to press forward a little bit having that courage a little bit to because a lot of you know demons are real I mean we just need to be blunt about it um, and, and being a demon possessed is a real thing and it's uh, probably a lot more real than people want to want to think about want to talk about um, at least Maybe not in them, but around people that you encounter and deal with. And but, but yeah, it's, it, it's not always you know the exorcist head spinning, and right? Right. No. Feeling and it's not you know, the. It's it, not always most, that. Most of the time, it's more subtle. Yeah, and there's a really good book called "This Present Darkness" that I think does that really, really well. Have you ever read that book? I've read parts of it because you really it's recommend it. Not, it's so true. it starts. You got to really get into it. Once you get into it, it's good. But uh, it kind of starts slow almost. But once you get into it, it's crazy how like there's a demonic presence over this town and it's it's subtly doing things here and there. And there's an angelic host that want to help, but the Christians have to call upon them. That's kind of the way that he structured it. And it's really neat. It's really, really cool. Um, and uh, <laughs> this, was, this is kind of a funny quote that I... It was somewhat from uh, a Christian rap song that I was listening to, but it's easy to carry the cross around your neck. But what about the one that they don't see? What about the one that Jesus carried up to Calvary? Mm. So it's easy to wear a cross, but mm. to carry it is is so much different. Well, that's something. That's, ooh. Right? 
Mm. Chew on that one, Steve. I, I look at yeah, like like you see all these kids wearing these shirts. That's why I don't li- I don't want to wear a cross because I don't want to be associated with like oh you're just another one of those guys that wear crosses. Like, and they're wearing these shirts, you know that they say you know like a faith based. I'm gonna say a lack of just an umbrella term, a faith based shirt. You know, a faith yeah. motif, and then uh, it's like, do you, do you even know what that means? But then you but then you see him cussing up a storm and you're like, Hey man, I like that verse. And there are, or, or you, or you see him and you're like, I like that verse. And like, what verse? What, what? Oh, Oh yeah. I don't even know what that is. Sure. That, mm. But to, to, to people to be able to see who you are through your actions and word. And I think that has to do with the witcher. When, when you see a witcher, they've got white hair, they've got cat eyes. They've there. There's scars everywhere. They're carrying two swords. You know, that's a witcher. And you think about it too. They don't know the Witcher's name. They know he's a Witcher, though. Yeah, no matter what town he goes, Witcher. That's like you. I remember going into certain towns and then even watching the Netflix series. Geralt would go into a different town, and they'd be like Witcher. That's how we're supposed to be with Christians. Christ Christians mean little Christ. So that that impacted me in a way. Yeah, because I I look back at, of course, I always like to wear a cross necklace, but I keep it hidden for that reason because I. being a man, just a person of mankind, a human, we all can fall. So I don't want that to be portrayed. I don't want to be able for someone to see that and think, I'm not going to follow Christ because that one guy was hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't want that to be a, a potential bad witness to someone. And that could be somebody. Yeah, a, uh, a trip, you know, or a stone on someone's path. But that, that's one reason I always try to carry this in my pocket too. Where'd you get that by the way? I ordered it off Amazon. Okay. And I've had it now for a I year. Like it. And it's one of those things I keep in my pocket. And throughout the day, of course, everybody puts their hands in their pocket. I always imagined like Jesus carrying a cross bigger than that. but So... I'm weak. I'm sorry. I'm not his kind of. Story. I love it. No, buy me one. I want one of those. I got you. But I, I look at it, and of course, being prior military, I'm not wasn't used to keeping my hands fully in my pocket until I got out. Then I'm, you're not allowed to, right? Yeah, you can't. Yeah. So, but now, of course, I always keep my hands in my pocket if I'm just walking or just working, and then I get a break, kind of stretch. Yeah. But if I put my hand in my pocket, I always feel that cross. Right. And at the same time, if being in retail, if I start dealing with a uh, kind of an unruly customer or just someone that's really tough, I just, my, that hand always goes in my pocket and I hold yeah. that as tight as I can. And it's like yeah. Christ died for them too. Yeah. It's like a reminder. Yeah. Like not Dude, that's solid. Yeah. Cause we're, you know, we're physical creatures. Usually, you know, we all fidget with stuff from time to time. That's a really good fidget spinner but, if you want to think about it. But the thing about it is it's not Lord, keep me from saying or harming your like your word or anything like that. It's yeah. like God rem- allow me to remember they're your creation too. You died for them yeah, just as much as you died for them. Yeah, they're my brother or sister. Even if they don't think. know it yet. Yeah, yeah. So, so being able to show that you're a Christian to people that don't, I guess, don't necessarily know that through your word, action, all that kind of stuff. You know, there's a place in Mexico where they actually do like a. It's kind of. So it's a symbolic yet at the same time realistic crucifixion every year where they select a person in the village either chooses to do it or gets selected. Where they stand up on the pedestal and he gets nails driven through his hands. Yes, but prior to Yeah, he actually gets crucified. And he 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 stands there for a day. But the one that I remember is there's another one where they kind of, what they do is they crawl on this rocky road carrying a full cross yeah and it's like 50 to 75 miles they crawl carrying that cross wow. as i remember and then i think each one kind of takes a little pass at it so each of them can actually bear that cross wow. and i'm like that's kind of extreme but some people need that yeah if that's if that's what gets you to remember christ through your year your one year where you actually pick up a cross and then there's another guy who I think recently stopped or recently completed. What he would do is he walked around the United States carrying like almost a cross made out of four by fours. He yeah. carried it all around the United States. Yeah. I think I saw, I saw some stuff about that guy. And it was just pretty cool because it's like, man, he, he's taking it. Like, he's like, I want to take this seriously. So yeah. he walked. I don't know if it was the whole United States or if it was just the South, but it was a big portion where he actually walked with a full cross. Right. 
and how impactful that would be for us, not necessarily to carry a cross, but for people to see our life as if we were carrying a cross. That would be really cool. Um, So the next thing we're talking about is the witchers have spells, they call them signs, while they're fighting. And I think that's a really cool thing because we've talked about prayer a little bit on this podcast, but how you can say real quick prayers, like, like you're talking about when you're with a customer and they're, they're just driving you up a wall and you, you, you're trying to be as nice as you can to them, be a good witness, be a good employee, whatever you want to say, just say a quick, quick prayer. Cause in, in the Witcher series and stuff, they're just one word real quick, almost one syllable sometimes. And that's all you got to do because our heavenly father, Jesus rather, uh, is the intercessor of our prayers. He knows what's going on with us. And we just got to say, God, I need your help real quick. Uh, Jesus, I need you. Sometimes just saying Jesus will, will suffice. And then sometimes, even if we can't say it, we have the Holy Spirit who is our actual intercessor too yeah. in our body that intercedes for us in prayer. When we don't know what to say, sometimes just look up and say, it's yours. Yeah. And are we on the sword yet? One more. So, yeah, <laughs> we all love swords here. Um, like talking about that when you're in conflict or battle or whatever you're going through, um, it's so important to have scripture that you can go back to. And I, for one, am not very good at memorizing scripture. I know stories. I'm better at like stories. Yeah. I'm Um, I'm terrible at memorizing, but I do have like a flash card. I'll keep in my truck that has four or five scriptural verses that directly relate to me and the different (laughs) temptations and things that I usually fall for and to just read that real quick. If I'm, if I'm struggling or, um, I just need that boost, uh, that Holy spirit boost, um, to, to help me with that fight. But at the same time, I think we all have that one verse. Yours is definitely the mustard seed verse. You know that by heart. Yeah. And I look back at the different times, of course, growing up, I didn't have a very spiritual background. Uh, I was, I grew up in a house that, we prayed at like Thanksgiving and Christmas and then, Oh yeah, there's Jesus. But that was really it. No, no fault of them. You know, I think that's, I think that's the typical American family now, really. But, Um, you know, is it, 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 be honest. But I look back at like when I really started diving in and it was really in between when I was getting out of high school and everything. And then my first year in the military, one of my uh, best friends at the time's father was a pastor and he sent me, on all the cards he would send me, it said, Joshua 9, be strong and courageous for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Now I can, because it was at a pivotal point in my life, and now when it's getting to a point where I, I don't know if I can bear this, it's like, Joshua 9, we we can subtly do it. It's the ones that impact you the most isn't the full, like, some people can quote a whole entire, I know pastors who can preach a whole chapter of the Bible without opening the Bible. They know it word for word. And they, cool. they they can know the depth of it, which is a good thing. But me, I'm, I can know, like you look at Jesus wept, the shortest verse in the Bible. If you want to remember just one verse. It's super powerful. Remember Jesus wept. Yeah. And then one that I've uttered probably on the last 10 podcast was Second Corinthians 521. He sent him who knew no sin to become sin so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. Each one has a little bit different impact in my life because there was a period where I was like you. I kept flashcards. I love and hate this thing. It's a very love-hate relationship. But I know no matter what, what I can do is I can open it. And the first app that I have set is the Bible app. Yeah. And I can just hit it. And even if I don't know a verse verse of the day he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his sake his name's sake psalm 23 3 yeah and sometimes i've opened that and i don't know why i've opened it and that verse has literally made me cry yeah whatever because it's living and breathing you know that's the word of god you know Mm -hmm. that's we're about to get into the sword and it's sword of the spirit i got a verse on that do it man what you got of course, you have Ephesians 6, where it talks about putting on the full armor. God. You got Hebrews uh, 4.12. 4.12, yeah. Let's talk about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yep. For the Word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, 
joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature hidden is hidden from me, him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him whom we must give an account. Yep. So right here in my hand, I hold the sharpest thing ever created. Yeah, I've got one too. You have one. Even if you have it in your phone. Granted, if you're going to do some hardcore studying, I really recommend getting an actual paper Bible. Oh, yeah. See, highlighter, you know, the, pen and paper beside you. I have yeah. notes in here that when the Spirit speaks to me as I'm reading, like I just have a revelation of, man, that applies to this part of my life. I can doodle it right next to it. Or yeah. sometimes, I know some people, they'll draw. Yeah. And they'll just start drawing while they're reading, and then a picture's there. Like right. of some, um, I was watching a person and they were talking about their story and some people might ma think it's made up, but she's a sister in Christ. So she was talking about how she was reading the crucifixion of Christ and she just started doodling. And by the end of it, it was a hill with three crosses. Wow. <clears throat> That's cool. I had a youth pastor friend, Caleb. You guys remember? Yeah, Caleb? I remember Caleb. Hi he, Caleb. He, uh, yeah. Hi Caleb. He, I think he listens to these. I don't know when he'll get to this one, but, uh, he had a, uh, one of the kids in the youth group, like come up to him and be like, Hey, uh, so I saw your Bible and like, is it okay if you, you know, highlight or write in your Bible? And he's like, yes, what? Yes, of course. And yeah, like he would say, I would highly recommend you get a Bible and just tear that thing up. I mean, not literally, that'd be bad, but highlight, write in it, write notes. Um, I'm to the point where I, I like, I would rather write notes in the Bible. I've, I've had lots of journals and different things and I kind of wish all those notes were somehow in my Bible and having like a journal Bible is great. But, uh, I follow this lady on YouTube that uh, I think her name's faith, something faith Wozniak or something like that. It's something how to like faith that. a life. How to faith a life. And she literally like will add pages you're not adding to scripture, but she's adding like pages of notes about the different verses she's reading in the Bible that she has. And it's really, really neat. Yeah. She'll add little snippets or post-its or whatever. And, uh, that way you, you have that Bible in different it's like in, a commentary. Bible. It's like a comment. It's your commentary. And I think it's really cool, especially if you're a parent to pass that on to your kids. And, and that's, that would be your legacy to your right, children so right. that they can know your heart, your mind, your soul. Yeah. And then it's also beneficial to yourself yeah. as far as you're you writing read it, differently. it, you're writing it the way you understand it. Yeah. You're, 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 you're doing things differently. And, uh, I recently got a real big Bible to, to take notes in that way. And Marissa, my wife makes fun of me because it's, it's giant. It's a huge Bible, but I got it for that reason. It's a tome. It well, is a tome. I could kill someone with it. That's like this. Anywhere I go, like I went through a church weekend one time. Of course, I'm at a table right next to the spiritual directors and they're like, what Bible is that? Is that a journaling Bible? They're like, you carry that everywhere with you? I'm like, yeah, this is yeah. the one I preach out of and everything. They're like, you could kill someone with that. I'm like, well, if need that's be. That's the point. But I look at it too. There's been. <laughs> yes, I know. There's been some times where I've been up on the pulpit in the pastoral sense that I'm giving a sermon and I open my Bible because I always like to, of course, I preach off my iPad, but I always have my Bible with me. Right. But there's some time because I always open to what I'm going to read. Granted, it might be wrote down on my iPad. But there, when I'm looking at the Bible at the same time, there's a note sometimes that'll jump out and it's like, wait a second, I'm going to not write or use what I put here, but yeah. what the Lord gave me at this point in time yeah. could be months or years ago was meant for this moment. Ooh. You look at the book of Esther and one of the greatest verses yeah. is perhaps this is the moment in which you were created. That one friendship, that one conversation you have. I was listening to a podcast yesterday the one I actually sent you yeah. and the author, John Maxwell was talking about how he, when he was going somewhere, he makes it, he's like, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about the present. Kind of what the Bible tells us. You can't take back the past and you can't predict the future. So worry about today. So how he put it is he's like, I'm going to make time to say hi to that person, make conversation and put in a hundred percent into that time. Now on lunch, when I'm by myself and I'm just relaxing, I'm going to cut it back to 40%. And then after lunch, I'm going to give it 100% again 
and do my best to make conversation, listen to that person. Because as Christians, no matter what walk you're in as a Christian, you're called to be a leader. If you follow Christ, you're supposed to lead people to Christ. Yes. So you're called to be a leader. So in order to be a leader, of course, you have to serve. But to serve, you have to know. And it continues to build upon yeah. it. And to know, you have to study. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that point, you have to know a little bit about leadership in a sense to further your mission to be a leader. Yeah. You can't just come out of the gate. Some people can be natural leaders, but at the same time, they're not going to be the most effective leader. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't Leroy Jenkins it. No, there we no. go. Look at him. Leroy, y'all, let's jump to level five, Care Morin. That is the castle that, the, the at least with Geralt, the witchers go to, the school of the wolf, uh, to winter in. So like in that world, the winters are real heavy. And uh, they'll go there for winter, or if they get really, really hurt, they'll go there and rest and recover. Is it kind of like the upper room in Axe? Oh, kind of. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, I'm thinking more of like, uh, and they continue their training there. I think of like different seasons that we go through. Uh, we, you know, go to church on Sunday, that kind of thing. Sometimes Wednesday. But I would say even that you should have seasons of like pulling back from the world, pulling back from your busy lifestyle uh, in like really seeking him. And I, I usually try to do that around um, Christmas time, Advent. I do like an Advent uh, book mm -hmm. I read every year. Uh, and it's really cool to like, I'm talking no social media, you know, I don't read or watch anything else and just that's it. Bible. And, and that's it. That's pretty awesome. I've done it for the past couple of years and it's been really cool. And then you get to, to Christmas that, you know, I think, we should celebrate it differently, but uh, we won't get into that. It all depends on the spirit. Yeah. And, and that uh, that's a tough topic for us to talk about. Talking about the Witcher. <laughs> but, but it's not. At the same time, you look at their festivals. Yeah. They don't give presents and everything. That's not what Christmas is about. Yeah. Christmas is the birth of Christ. Right. And as long as you celebrate it out of that. Yeah. Because I know too many Christian Christians nowadays that are, Get pretty of, extreme getting pretty extreme and not doing christmas at all and then i'm like you're missing the point yeah if you don't want to do the gifts or the trees that's fine but do it in a way that you're going to enjoy the season and something i was telling you about i really want to uh, so i have this design of a tattoo i've absolutely loved since i've seen it it's an alpha and omega sign with a giant p and x on it so it's chiro okay so the x means chai yeah for christ so oddly enough as everyone's trying to stay uh politically sound or not offend anybody they're like oh happy xmas they're undeniably saying happy christmas when you told me about that i, I looked it up because i was like i don't know yeah, yeah that's what it means it, that's hilarious that's because i've always seen x is like why would you just write semus or you know why are you taking christ out of it but literally the Greek word is X, mm -hmm. or the letter. Chai. chai. I think it's Kai. It's not like a chai latte. I, I would actually drink one of those right now. <laughs> chai. chai. <laughs> Seasons. So let's go into the boss battle, guys. Ooh. The White Wolf. And how he is a loner. And how, uh, you know, wolves uh, hunt and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we aren't supposed to be wolves. As much as we want to be cool, the loner, you know, oh, check me out, I'm a lone wolf. We, kind of, we have to be the shepherds. No, we have to be the sheep. Well, that's, well it depends on what context no, you're calling. No, okay, we're, we're the sheep. We'll talk about this. We're staying in the context of Jesus, 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 Jesus is the shepherd. shepherd. I got you. I know what you're saying, yeah. though. At time, there's seasons where we become shepherds. And sometimes we need to be sheep dogs to protect the sheep against the sheep. Uh, Listen, wolf. we're sheep. We're not sheep. We're not cool sheep dogs. Like what is it? Uh, lone uh, American sniper. Is that the one he talks about that? Yeah. It's American so. sniper. Chris Kyle. Or sheep. So we aren't, we don't have to worry about hunting. We are let, we are in green pastures. Our shepherd protects us. We just get to lay around and eat. I see what season we're talking about now. I got you friend. Spring. Just the season of our shepherd taking care of us. I got you. Spring. <laughs> and that we have a good shepherd that we need we need a flock more than anything we need other believers around us who are 
following the good shepherd and, you know, something really cool about sheep that they recognize the shepherd's voice and that when one follows him in direction, all of them follow. And if it's not the shepherd that's calling them, they won't go. Right. Unless they're like enticed. Right. Or they like say, I think back in those days when someone was to steal sheep, they would go steal one and start walking it around and the others would follow it into their pasture. Yeah. Which is dangerous, but also pretty great. But you look at it too. Geralt always tries to be in that lone wolf, but in the end, he always has people. Well, that was that was the one of the points I want to get at is like he starts out as being the lone wolf, but slowly he gains followers and friends and he helps people out. And in the end, he has all these people that he can rely on and, and you know, they, you know, whatever, save the world, all that kind of stuff. That's the one thing about starting with The Witcher 3 and playing through it that I was so confused. I'm like, how in the world did you know this person? Yeah, that was a little confusing because everyone you meet, it's like, oh, hey, good to see you again. And yeah. you're like, but I don't have any context. I don't know what you're and talking And you're about. like best friends and you go into yeah. a tavern and you have a party with people. And then it's like, where does this fit? But then it but goes I mean, like, that's the same thing if you jump in and read, uh, if you read Timothy, you read Timothy, you know, it's like, you know, bring me my coat and this blacksmith guy. Don't talk to him. Or you, if <laughs> I you love that you bring that up. That's kind of like if you start yeah, it's at. The same th- it's the same thing. It's like yeah, starting at the end know. of the book or in the middle and wondering what happened in the first part. Or if yeah. you, or if you don't read Acts before you start reading all the rest of the New Testament, you really need to read. Uh, well, you need to read the four Gospels first and, and then Acts. read yeah. Acts. And you yeah. definitely do not want to start with Revelation first yeah, because that's awful idea. You you can't. Should be under, very confused. That plus you can't understand the true beauty behind it. Yeah why it's called revelation and how the original name of it was the revelation of Jesus Christ, yeah. the revealing right. of Jesus Christ. So when he comes back yeah. and everything, it adds up in lines. Like it looks like that meme where this guy has all the pieces of paper up there and red With strings. The yard and, and, stuff. and he's like, oh, this. and he's got the, the, the cigarette half hanging out of yeah, his mouth and he's all disheveled. You, yeah. you can't do that without first going through and piecing it together. Yeah. Right. This is the greatest puzzle. This is the greatest book. It, like, if you like fantasy, it's in here. If yeah. you like historical history, it's in here. If yeah. you like fiction, it's not in here. <laughs> yeah. Because it's truth. Well, there are well, well Jesus did ha- tell stories and parables. So those are fiction with a moral, with a moral uh, objective. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. So anyway, we're going to land the plane. We're wrapping up. Yeah. So our level one was the continent that we live in a world with monsters and we need to be careful. We need to uh, put the armor on and just be careful where we go. Uh, the trial of grass is that, you know, whatever you go through in this life, um, whatever trial, tribulation, whatever you want to call it, uh, will mold you and cre- create in, in you a new life that you can, uh, can go into the next trial and tribulation stronger because of it. Uh, we need to hunt some monsters and know our enemy. We need to, uh, Be fishers of men, like Jesus calls many of the disciples. Kind of no lack of a better term, bait, but more so uh, finding common ground and sharing the gospel with people. On that, can I add something? Sure. Well, you look at, like, historically, when how they were fishing, they weren't fishing with bait. They were fishing with nets. Right. So they were going out and they were dragging to catch it. Right. So they weren't enticing them. They were just hoping that they were on that side. Okay. So when he called them to be fishers of men, he's like, go and drag the depths to catch the fish. Go mm. to the lowly places to catch the fish. It's not talking about oh, putting a... That's something to dig into. Not putting... Because you look, he's... Right, like, yeah. It was not, it's not like a one fishing pole throwing it out. Because he says uh, in another... Because I think two times in there, he talks about, hey, cast your net to the other side. And right. they're like, no. Yeah, they weren't we've been catching fishing. anything. We've been fishing all night. They cast it. They drug the depths and it almost sinks the boat. Right. That that's what it is. The enemy so cast your net where Jesus is telling you. Because to. the enemy wants to catch you with bait. He wants to pierce your mouth and pull you in. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Where are we at? Level four, tools of the trade. Um just being being sharp with this weapon, with the sword of the spirit, the Bible, uh digging into it every day, just um, knowing it cover to cover and just staying in it. And uh you know, having having some quick prayers that you can pray through uh, while you're battling throughout the day or having scripture and flashcards that you can go through. 
Um, but having a place that you could rest and recover, whether that be, you know, a church body, a home, um, or a season of where you can winter and, and kind of disconnect from the world and to not be a wolf, to not be a loner, to be, uh, to be a sheep, sometimes a shepherd, but mostly a sheep to have a flock, a good shepherd. And, uh, yeah. So that was a good one, guys. That was uh-huh. what's next on the docket. The next is final fantasy. Yeah, so uh, please like and share this. Tell your mom about it. All your friends and family. Michael's got some books. Check those out. I've got books. Check them out. We've got shirts. I got this shirt up. Uh, he's we don't got, have this shirt up. It's similar to that one. It's it's more like that one. Uh, but yeah, different merch you can check out. We've got a Facebook page. Um, hopefully, we'll have lots of links where it's easy to find us. And uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, I mean, we even got coffee mugs, too. I mean, because we know Jesus loves coffee. He brews. He brews. He brews. Yeah. On that note, y'all have a good night. God bless. Good night. God bless. Thank you so much for listening to the Nerds in Christ podcast. Our goal is always to give glory and honor to God in all things and share the love and light of Christ everywhere.